Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. And as the Conservatives are falling back in the polls after their artificial vaccine bounce and Boris Johnson's personal approval ratings are in free fall, I'm going to take a look at the prospect that the potential successors are maybe sensing that their time has come, with Rishi Sunak chief amongst them. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, for all the talk a month or so ago from Conservative MPs that Boris Johnson wanted to win another general election or maybe even two before bowing out, the prospect of him being in charge for that long seemed ludicrous. The only reason he made it this far was being granted that ill-fated general election by an oppositional parliament that really should have known better. They had him by the short and curlies. But Boris Johnson is not a leader. He's not popular in his party. His own MPs know that, and for those that didn't at the time, the last year will have exposed his critical lack of leadership quite badly. He has nothing going for him other than his baffling ability to convince people that he is the right person to lead the country via the cunning use of appearing useless. The messy hair, the rambling answers, the silly poses, all an act and somehow works on the public that really ought to prize competence, competence over bumbling. I mean, what did he do last week when he needed a distraction? What did he do? He tried to say that he was swept out to sea last year on his holiday to Scotland and had to be rescued. Doesn't matter if it's true or not. I don't care whether it's true or not. The point is that when he felt he needed to distract from his crass comments about, you know, Margaret Thatcher being a secret eco-warrior when she was plunging most of Britain into poverty... He chose to relay a story, to get the public back on his side, he chose to relay a story that pen paints him as such an idiot that he can't even go on holiday without needing someone to look after him. How does this work? A man who can't even wipe his own backside being the person people trust to run the country. Don't leaders normally try to portray themselves as superhuman to impress people? Absolute madness. Anyway... The point is, seems to be wearing a bit thin now. Whenever he looks like he's on the ropes, you inevitably look around to see if any would-be challengers look interested. And it seems that this time, well, his Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, certainly seems to be. Sunak is not exactly on the same wavelength as his Prime Minister on the economy. Johnson wants to spend, Sunak does not. Things apparently got a bit tetchy as a result of Sunak's letter to Johnson, warning of the harm to the economy that the government policy on coronavirus travel arrangements were having. Naturally, the letter was leaked, which is how I knew about it. Um, according to a report in the Times this Saturday, though, Johnson flipped his lid and threatened to demote Sunak in front of a lot of people. It seems that the first Johnson knew about the letter was when he saw it in the papers. Although, to be fair, given that he spends more time reading the papers than his own briefs, that's not necessarily Sunak's fault. For all we know, that letter was on his desk for ages because he couldn't be asked to read it. But the fact that the letter was leaked means that Sunak wants to make his opposition to government policy known. What you notice is that the key potential challengers to Johnson have been keeping a very low profile of late. Sunak has been doing this from the start. You know, he pops his head up above the ramparts whenever he's got some good news to deliver, you know, furlough or the forms of income support, for example, then ducks for cover for months on end at times. He's the Chancellor. He's the second most senior member of the government. And yet we hardly ever see him. This is unheard of. A clearer case of not allowing the government's mess to get stuck on him, I could not describe. But I've also noticed that Michael Gove is conspicuous by his absence. Even Sajid Javid, he's, he's just returned to the cabinet, the new health secretary, he's not about. He's a new cabinet minister and he's the health minister during a global pandemic and we hardly see him. If that's not a sign that they're thinking this might be endgame and they don't want the mess splattered on them, I don't know what is. But the sign I was most interested in was Sonak angering Johnson. That was curious. Because let's imagine the scenario. Now, let's say Johnson has it out with Sonak and tries to demote him. According to the article, actually, Johnson told a meeting that was supposed to include Sonak, but he didn't show, I gather, that he might demote him to health minister. See how he likes being the health secretary. 
I'm not sure how that would be a particularly serious punishment because if Johnson thinks we're getting past the worst of the pandemic, wouldn't that just paint him in a good light? Because it would allow Sunak to look like a good chancellor who then ended up, ended the pandemic as, as health secretary. So maybe Johnson thinks there's another shit show coming. But Sunak wouldn't have to accept. Now, let's say Sunak, you know, Johnson says, right, yeah, I, I, I'm making you health secretary now. Let's say Sunak refuses the position. So he's effectively sacked. He goes to the back benches in order to lead the rebellion against Johnson. Also has another benefit to Sunak. He has become very popular because of the financial support the Treasury have provided during the pandemic. This has saved a lot of jobs. Yes, he's still abandoned a lot of people, like three million small business owners who've not had a penny, but a lot of people still credit him with saving their income. But all that financial support is ending at the end of next month. Come the end of September, it's all gone, and the consequences of that policy will hit. If the end is coming for Johnson, it might be a decent time for Sunak to stop being Chancellor. That way he gets to retain the credit for providing all that support and not be tarred with the blame for removing it. Some other hapless Burt can do that. Then, if there's a leadership challenge at the end of this year or early next year, Sunak is well placed to swoop in. Personally popular in the wider party, regarded as serious and competent by the general population, would be a firm favourite. Now, this would only work in Sunak's favour if Johnson's end was coming. Bear in mind that his predecessor tried the same thing but got the timing badly wrong. Sajid Javid, who was the Chancellor, refused to play by Johnson's rules, left for the backbenchers, where he tried needling the Prime Minister, didn't really work because Johnson's position was too secure. If Sunak basically played the same game and Johnson's polling figures recovered, he'd have blown it in the same way as well. Javid had to come crawling back to the Cabinet in a much more junior position. I don't think Sunak fancies a dose of the same. Now, Johnson hasn't actually sacked Sunak or even tried to demote him yet, but by taking the action he did, Sunak will have known that he was inviting a showdown. A man who has been very careful to stay out of things over the past year and a half will not have suddenly shot his load unless he thought something was different this time. Boris Johnson has a 3% approval rating amongst Conservative Party members, with Sunak on 74%. The same poll carried out by Conservative Home showed that Sunak was the clear favourite to succeed Johnson. Even the fact that a poll about Johnson's successor is on a site for purely for Conservative Party members could be taken as a sign that the party is thinking along those lines. There's a bit of a tri-factor working against Johnson here. His personal approval ratings are rock bottom amongst party members. His personal approval ratings amongst the voting public are well into the negative now. In fact, they're the lowest they've ever been for him. And finally, and much more seriously, the Conservatives are going down in the polls as well. Labour are right on their coattails now. And consider that Labour haven't actually done anything to do that. That is purely the Conservatives losing it. People still don't know what Labour represents for them. This will surely be rectified at the Labour Party conference at the end of next month. Now, if that conference goes well for Labour and Starmer, if they're able to set out an agenda clearly, an inspiring one, there could be a seismic shift here that spells the end for Johnson. Because the week after Labour's conference, Boris Johnson will be headed to the Conservatives. If Starmer does well, and it reflects in the polling, which could already be a lot worse by then anyway, Johnson could find himself not only with catastrophic polling approval ratings himself, but with the party behind Labour. You're going into your party conference. He could face a fairly hostile audience, at least when they're woken up after nap time. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.